Good, uh, good afternoon uh, to all of you. I'm Steve Havertz, the CEO of uh, DPA Global, and I'm here in, uh, today um, in the presence of uh, David and Nick from Tri Finance and Ahu from SNI. I'm very pleased uh, that they are uh, around. Um, we would like to uh, address today uh, the uh, all you need to know on e-invoicing systems and the requirements to be tax compliant. So in in essence, e-invoice is a is not entirely new, certainly not in finance, but it's sort of getting uh, to become a new and big thing in tax as well. So today's session will be um, about a short introduction by me on the data-driven world of tax we, we walk into slowly but regularly and sometimes even quicker. Then uh, David and Nick will um, tell everything you need to know about uh, e-invoicing, um, where they also will will address the regulatory finance, um, uh, IT specifics, and and tax elements of uh, of e-invoicing and, and uh, the way their organization works on projects like this. And Ahu will um, also add to it a whole demo um, uh, as an I. Um, being a software company involved in, uh, in the interaction between SAF uh, ERP systems and uh, the EDI uh, exchange with, uh, of invoices with tax authorities in uh, quite some countries. So I think we have a very interesting uh, agenda for today. We have uh, uh, almost 150 registrations, so for, of which uh, and even in the busy December days, um, one third already is uh, is online. So welcome again, and let's um, move to the next slide. So I want to give a very quick overview why uh, in-house people should uh, treat tax as uh, tax relevant data as a strategic asset. Um, and, and uh, give you an illustration from a couple of angles, uh, both direct tax as, as well as indirect tax. So that's something for all the, all the diff, uh, diverse audience we have online. If we go to the next slide, and this is an illustration on, on where tax uh, payers start sharing much more data than they used to do with uh, tax authorities. This is a slide uh, on Barclays taken from their website. So Barclays, as a bank, files a, a public CBCR, and, uh, and, and this is the, the page which uh, addresses the UK. So what you see is all the data on, on country by country is all listed on the website. What you see also here is details on we are one of the largest banks in the UK. Uh, but in the third section of the, of the text, you see in 2019, we paid we paid no UK corporation uh, tax, although in the in the numbers you see they have been paying a lot of other taxes um, in in the UK. So this is an illustration of the public uh, the public disclosure of tax relevant data. If we take the next slide, uh, then we see the IRS, and the IRS has uh, taken all the country by country filings and and put them in one database and analyzed. Uh, a couple of uh, different angles to that data. Uh, for example, here you see that the effective tax rate in, uh, in places like Bermuda, BVI, and Caymans is around 1.3%. And of all the US headquarter multinationals, um, their non US income, 13.3% uh, was reported in uh, Bermuda, BVI, and Caymans. Um, if you if you look at the bottom of this table, uh, it's only 1.3 non-US uh, taxable income was reported in a country like Germany. So this is what what this whole pool of data allows tax authorities to do. This is a public database, by the way. So uh, Glenn de Sousa has uh, made this analysis, but it's publicly available um, on on the internet. If we then make the next move to the next slide, you you even get the extra where in September the uh, the EU has decided that uh, companies with uh, 750 million uh, euros of revenue and more need to file their 
um, public CBCR on their website as of 2023. So a lot of people have not even picked it up. Uh, all in all, tax-driven data, yes, that's that's already clear. That's why most people are on the online. But even beyond that, this data becomes public. That's another feature we uh, we like to address uh, during this uh, this conference. If we go to the next slide, so if we get a little bit closer to the title of what we are going to talk about, so I borrowed one of the slides of uh, Ahu, and she will tell you a little bit in more detail. This is where e-invoicing starts becoming critical in, in these jurisdictions uh, with different timings. And this is all about real-time e-invoicing, and you get into different systems uh, like post audit and clearing systems. Uh, Ahu will tell you all about it. Uh, I call this like oil and water. It's, it's moving fast. Tax authorities are in need of this digital version of the, of the invoice and uh, are, are assuming corporates are ready to uh, do that disclosure on a real-time basis, in some cases even stopping uh, the, the client from running its regular finance operations. Um, if we move to the next slide, it sort of says, okay, once you have those invoices with the tax authorities in on a, for example, a clearing system, then the tax authorities have a lot of information and they can start pre-populate uh, VAT returns and send you the e-version of that. Uh, and more and more you move into the direction of a full, um, what I call a co-compliance model between taxpayers and the tax authorities, where the only thing which gets exchanged is data sets. Um, that is sort of visualized in the in the next slide, uh, where uh, basically the, this is the view by the tax uh, authorities. This is a publication of OECD of, uh, of about a year ago. And, and what you see is that the tax authorities, their view is they will give you interfaces with the taxpayer, but they will at the same time uh, collect a lot of data in the back end and connect those points as you see the underwater. It's a, it's a little bit only the tip of the iceberg uh, you, you actually will be seeing as a taxpayer. So this is a little bit of view on how tax, tax authorities are driving the inter, interplay with uh, taxpayers. And if you look at the next slide, it's sort of a paradigm shift, as, as people call it. You, you put an E in front of everything, and you get sort of the new uh, value chain, um, which, which tax authorities seem to be offering to, uh, to taxpayers. So in, all in all, uh, yes, tax becomes a data-driven world. Uh, through e-invoice, uh, the tax authorities get the, certainly in the clearing system a very good grip on the top line of uh, of the PLs of uh, multinational corporations and and uh, that uh, is a, a big challenge for a lot of our multinational clients because the the real time nature of uh, of of the interaction with tax authorities on that uh, e invoice uh, needs to be facilitated and, uh, and the systems are not all, always ready for it so with that uh, let me hand over here to uh, David and Nick for um, uh, the, the next part of this uh, session. David, Nick, can I give you the floor? Yes, thank you very much, Dave. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is David Busby. I'm the expert manager order to cash for Tree Finance, and I'm here together with Nick van der Berg. He will introduce himself uh, shortly after the, the slide. Uh, we work closely together with TPA. We are a financial consultancy organization in the Netherlands, Belgium, Germany, and Luxembourg. And um, yeah, we're going to talk about shortly about invoicing in our platform, electronic invoicing global. And go to the next slide, please. Oh. Before we do that, um, we would like to ask you a question. Do you feel like your organization is in control when it comes to invoicing regulations? You have three options. Yes, completely. Yes, but we do miss some updates from time to time or no. And I'm very curious what the audience has, uh, has to say about, uh, about this. 
organizer can also do so. Okay. So we're gonna take some seconds. The update is yes, but we the most people said 57 percent said yes. We don't miss yes, but we do miss some updates from time to time. And that's not completely surprising. Uh, uh, and that's because of the following. Um, this is what we hear in our business uh, a lot nowadays. Um, Steve already mentioned that in the global in, in the global world of electronic invoicing and VAT, there's a lot of going on at this moment. Go to the next slide, please. Then and a lot is going on at the last five years, five to ten years, and especially our clients who work globally and has a global presence as well. Um, con are accounted with these kind of uh, troubles in terms of knowledge, uh, latest updates, latest regulations, um, governments who change a lot and also make new stories uh, about their uh, invoicing and their VAT regulations, that um, we came across the situation that we would like to help our clients and bundle all information that's possible. On this, you know, in this slide, you see a number of yeah, amendments, rules, regulations, laws, according to uh, their country, and telling companies how to handle invoicing, how to handle VAT, in what way you should do that. Um, there's a lot going on, a lot is changing. There are a lot of countries in the world. So what we did is we tried to combine this in one portal and make a database of all information needed all you need to know about electronic invoicing. Go to the next slide. Um, in a short matter of time, we're going to demonstrate you um, the way we inf inform our clients about electronic invoicing, show the regulations, but also show what, um, in what matter of time and in which timelines uh, changes can be made. So you can be prepared for the coming regulations, with coming rules, and in terms of invoicing. Um, so before we go to the demo, I'd like to ask you, uh, how you, how do you stay up to date on all the current and upcoming invoicing regulations? Is it through one of the big four? Is it through our invoicing provider? Is it through uh, your uh, local offices or all of the above? Or is there not a specific way to stay up to date? Because this is the struggle that we have seen before. Interesting, all the above. So there's a mix of, majority says there's a mix of the big four invoice providers and local offices. Um, does, uh, does that surprise you, David? Because I, I think it, it means there's still some fragmentation on, yeah. on those drawers where obviously you like to go to the original source, your first slide, the publication by Ministry of Finance that certain data needs to be provided in a certain format yeah. um, everyone has access to that source and therefore uh, the fragmentation of sources might be explained easily or, or do you see that differently now this is exactly what we see the fr fragmentation of information the fr fragmentation of the, the, the source where you get your information from also uh, what we also see is that um, information can be misinterpreted uh, in, in a different way. Also, the source of the information where it comes from is the, uh, the, makes uh, the story behind the, the new regulation different. Is it coming from a software provider, or is it coming from a government, or is it coming from uh, an economist, is it coming from news, uh, is it a rumor? Um, all these kinds of information came, come across to companies and they need to handle uh, in a certain way. Um, this is actually the reason that we bundled it and may try to make one single truth of what's going on about uh, invoicing uh, about e invoicing um, Nick's going to demonstrate later on and he's going to explain as well where this information comes from very important uh, uh, we are independent so we don't have we don't sell software um, for e invoicing but we and we also only use our source from uh, local uh, authorities so only when a local authority mentions something or agrees on something or makes an agenda, 
that's the only truth in, in, in our terms. And that's why we try to get one single truth on one platform uh, to be make sure that the information doesn't come fragmented to your organization because you need to act and you act, need to act quickly when uh, authorities mention that they're going to change their laws in terms of invoicing. So knowing this all and then the knowledge of knowledge is power, um, this is where it starts. Um, but always, like Nick mentioned, it's not only a finance department party anymore. It's involving more departments right now. So um, we'd like to ask you which departments are involved in invoicing comp uh, compliance. Is it tax, IT, finance, or other, or is it a combination of what? Which we'd like to know. Please go ahead. Well, there you go. Um, about fragmented, uh, talking about fragmented, you see that, that this is what we see as well that all departments mentioned here are involved in this story. Um, finance, in terms of getting the invoice out, IT, because of systems need to uh, assist on e electronic invoicing, and also tax, because there are a lot of regulations you have to take into account. So, it's, it's not only a finance party anymore. It's a comprehensive, uh, complex, and uh, corporational, um, uh, yeah, um, cooperation between departments to get this done. So if you go to the next slide, if you have knowledge, you have the power in hand, but this is where it starts. So uh, electronic invoicing global can offer you information uh, firsthand and always up to date and always, always informing you beforehand when something is going to change. That gives you already an advantage in, compared with other companies who don't have this, uh, this solution. Um, but then you're not there. Then this is the moment to take action. So what we developed is a roadmap to be e-invoicing uh, compliant. And it all starts with your SE situation. Uh, with the invoicing global in your hand, you have to discover as well for internal purposes where, it, where who, how, who are you as a company? Eh? What is your presence like? Uh, how many invoices and how many in revenue per, invo per country do you send? Uh, it's always, and like Nick mentioned as well in the database, we make segregation between B2G, B2B, and B2C because per country it can differ. Some countries already are obliged to send invoices to be business to government sometimes business to business. So you need to discover for your own company, who are my clients? Is it only business, is it governmental, or is it also a consumer? In most countries now, if you're local presence, you need to comply with the invoicing, e invoicing regulations if that's in place. Sometimes uh, it can also be cross-border. So be aware, are you sending invoices centra, centra, uh, central or are you present in a country and you send the invoice over there? And then the IT party comes along how is your current IT landscape? Which systems are involved in your ERP, in your finance, in your invoicing, in your order to cash process? Because finance, tax, and IT will have to work together in this process. So if you have that, and in step two, the to be situation, you have your current regulations, you can discover for which country you are and prioritize the countries that you need to focus on and check with the electronic invoice and global database what the current regulations are and check if you're already compliant, yes or no. If not, you need to make a plan. Um, be informed, so you need to be aware of what the future regulations will be to determine what your required IT information per country will be. Compare your situation as is with the to be situation, you'll get a gap. So you'll get easily figured out which countries you need to focus on, which systems you need to take in place, which countries you need to prioritize first. It's going to be an impact. And you need to be sure up front what your impact is going to be. What systems need to be taken in place? Which employees need to be trained? What regulations, rules do you need to do? And then, always supported by software, you need to make a selection of which software is going to support my current processes at this moment. Um, there are number, hundreds of companies worldwide right now who offer services in e-invoicing. Um, there's none who covers the whole world. So that means if you're a global player in multiple, 
both of the continents, you won't get get along with only one so only one supplier. There are a number of reasons why suppliers don't have uh, world coverage. But you're for your company, you need to decide which which supplier can help me make my IT landscape up to, uh, optimized and send invoices go, go, uh, get invoices all that along. Also. When you are working with a software supplier, you need, still need to onboard, impl implement, and onboard your countries. So there will be a timeline for your process, uh, in, internally pro uh, timeline in place to follow the roadmap and implement country by country by country and so on, so you get your compliance in place. Uh, mind you, this is not just clicking a few boxes and make sure that you uh, have your systems in place. This is an implementation. Uh, with global um, consequences. So we go to the last slide. Um, of course, we are Tree Finance, we are a consultancy organization and we can assist you with that. Um, this is the way we work with the roadmap and not only we have the knowledge base in place, um, you need to have somebody along that can help you with your uh, invoice strategy and also bear in mind that it all, always involves IT because also the process optimization and integration needs to be done as well. That's so, so far for our part. Yeah, thanks, uh, David. Uh, the, the, a question, uh, what, what, is the, what are the top two challenges for companies who even if they take a multidisciplinary approach to your roadmap uh, what 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 two main challenges have you come across in, in running such a, yeah. a process now what you see is that if you're an international company and you have local presence there is or most times we see that there's always always a local solution in place already and what you what we also see is that a lot of handwork is going on so you have an erp system pro producing an invoice and an employee is typing over this in a an, in an temporarily uh, technical solution to get the invoice out and be compliant um, and if you have multiple companies if, you, if you're if you're present in multiple multiple countries you'll see that there are like multiple solutions in place as well our strategy would be to get rid of them and try to get as lean and mean and try to get as little technical solutions in place. So you need to re-implement uh, the, the current situation. That's one. Second thing is that uh, companies get surprised by the, 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 the government because they're not aware of what's going on. So then finally somebody in a local office mentioned headquarters to say hey in a month of time we need to be compliant and this is the way we need to send our invoices and we don't know how please help and then at headquarters in a different country they get in panic and they try to get a solution in place most of the time and, and again a local solution and in this way your whole IT uh, infrastructures get fragmented employees are uh, manually in, in, uh, entering invoices with all errors and mistakes and um, uh, as, 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 um, uh, as a consequence. Yeah. Um, and this is something you need to be aware of that it is technical, it is tax, it is finance, there are people involved. Uh, if you're not informed and upfront, you will be surprised. And if you keep your uh, strategy as this in place that you have in every country a local solution, in a number of time, in a number of years, you will have like a tenfold of local solutions in place, and then try to maintain that, and maintain the the the, compl the, the compliance in, the, in that country. That's the that's the biggest uh, biggest. Okay. Uh, challenge. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a very relevant message, uh, and that's also uh, why I'm very pleased uh, that uh, as an I could uh, could, could uh, be part of this presentation. Because they can bring multiple country solutions also from a software perspective. Again, maybe not covering the whole world, as you said, uh, David, correctly, but uh, certainly trying to avoid the fragmentation of software solutions on, at, the, at the local level, which simply requires in, in, in uh, two to five years uh, a next uh, uh, consolidation of all those local solutions in, the, in a more integrated end-to-end -end system. 
I think that's uh, what what you've been telling as well. I, I would yep. like to open the floor uh, to you, Ahu, and uh, take us to uh, the wonders world of the technology behind us. Uh, thank you, Steve, for the introduction, first of all. Um, actually, also thank you for all the audience uh, taking part in that session. Um, actually, we can jump directly with the next slide. Uh, you have introduced myself. My name is Ahu and I am in charge in SNI for account management for sales and business development. And I will now try to go in uh, deeply, go through the, these new regulations, upcoming one, existing ones, how to read them and uh, how we are solving them in our add-on. I will also have a, a live demo at the end of my session. These are the countries actually we are uh, serving with our e-document solutions. Uh, these are mainly Europe, Asia, Australasia, and South America. I can say our coverage has reached up to 34 countries. And uh, we are following, uh, especially in Europe, uh, whatever happens in terms of e-documents. And we are trying to bring, um, as soon as possible, our solutions into the market. Uh, can we jump, please, to the next slide? Another one. Uh, I will uh, firstly. I, I would like to talk um, why why actually uh, this. As you know, the countries, the tax authorities are keen about collecting the tax, and uh, they are increasing day by day the effectiveness of the tax collection. By doing that, they they achieve. They would like to achieve these goals, and they are introducing new tax reporting requirements. And we can say that the digital revolution in VAT compliance in effect of our day now. And we will be seeing that more and more companies are going to introduce comprehensive VAT requirements. Uh, I will go into the details. However, we can tell like they are introducing new safety types models. They are introducing mandatory e-invoicing or even uh, the real-time reporting. And when we look in the next slide uh, from the business perspective, what does that mean? Uh, first of all, um, as you have also mentioned, we can say the companies never reported more data to authorities than today. And this brings definitely new challenges because the authorities are making, uh, first of all, continuous changes. And the companies need to initiate a transition in terms of the tax function and also their IT infrastructure being capable to follow up these changes, uh, tax authorities coming up. And um, especially the international companies, the multinational uh, ones, they need also uh, choose their way, which would be globally scaled for them. Uh, so we will continue actually to track businesses trying to keep up with the continuous digitalizations of their organization. And um, even when we look just at Europe, uh, we will see that uh, many different schemas uh, and different way of implementations are on the table. And uh, on top of this, the regulations are being introduced gradually and uh, continuous updates are coming off on top of that. So even it's not easy for them to take a company as the, uh, let's say, direction and to implement the same because it can happen that until your term comes, the regulation can slightly change. So we can say all these changes are resulting somehow to a never ending cycle of adaptation uh, with the regulations and with the challenges. Uh, can we jump to the next slide, please? Ahu, uh, Ahu maybe one, one point I would like to add to your digitalization. Once the, the, the tax authorities get an e-invoice through uh, a clearance or pre-clearance uh, uh, at, at their desk, obviously uh, now it looks like that's, that the only reason they do it is for VAT purposes. But I can tell you it defines typically if you as a multinational company send out an invoice, it defines your... Uh, your top line of sales and your profit and loss. And immediately the tax authorities can use that data point to start assessing your taxable income for corporate income pr purposes as well. So uh, this is where the collection of data, 
blurs the lines between uh, where are we talking VAT, are we talking customs, are we talking uh, corporate income tax or transfer pricing? So that's mm -hmm. a, an addition to why digitalization uh, on on the data covers more than just the VAT C. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Ahead, uh, no, no, that that was a good uh, feedback and comment from your side. By the way, also for the audience, I mean they can also jump in because that was also our purpose that we would like to have an interactive session. Feel free to put questions or add comments, please. Uh, maybe let's have another quick poll. Uh, we can ask uh, the audience uh, what what are the challenges uh, they are facing by this rapid digitalization of tax technology. Uh, is the problem the adaptation or is the problem we can say the implementation cost or is it more internal with the staff oriented uh, which needs to also personally adapt themselves with the new systems new tools in the company yeah that's an interesting question uh, by the way audience the, the audience can use the chat functionality uh, Rosanna am I right and then uh, you you share with us the questions uh, uh, for for the panelists. I mean that that's good they they see that because that was also my expectation. Um, the the cost um, shouldn't be that issue and uh, it is more the adaptation because this is really rapid and uh, especially also from the tax function perspective. Um, the qualification of data is changing, the skills in the, the employees needs to be adapted, improved and so on. And that's good also that uh, the, the audience is aware of the core problem or let's say the core challenge. Okay, so if we are talking about different report types and we are saying always that's going into the direction of the continuous transaction based, uh, but let's uh, put in a nutshell what we mean when we say post audit, when we say invoice reporting and e-invoicing. All of them sound a bit close to each other, however, they have um, core differences. Let me start with the less uh, continuous one, uh, which is the post audit one. We can put, for example, the safety reports from OECD countries into the that box, that is the post audit. So here, actually, um, it's kind of a periodic tax filling and um, by using the invoices uh, you are reporting actually in a certain period this can be monthly usually it is done uh, monthly um, you are actually reporting to the tax authority what has been done in that certain month so it is the less uh, transaction based reporting let's say and even it is uh, commonly used in Europe in OECD countries. However, they are using different schemas, they are using different details. So even for that monthly reporting, there is not a one unique common um, format and way of doing. The only um, common point of this uh, post audit, we can say um, it is used uh, mostly the XML file format and Either you send directly submit to the tax authority or you upload their web pages manually. Um, so this is the SAFTI report. By the way, in my demo session, I will show you the latest SAFTI country, which is Romania. You will get more uh, idea how this report looked like and in which detail at least the Romanian tax authority is going to dive. And the second thing format is the invoice reporting. Uh, that is kind of an immediate supply of information. I can give the example of Spain, which we have just uh, recently have seen. And um, actually, if your company is above the threshold, you need to submit details of your invoices. We can see on a near real time, uh, near real time basis. So uh, you have, um, if I'm not mistaken, three or four days to deliver that data. So you need to report tax authorities the detail of each individual invoice that you raise and that you receive. However, um, again, this needs to be done uh, not immediately. You have certain periods uh, differentiating country by country. You have that time frame uh, to deliver your data. 
Uh, last but not least, the most complex one we can say is the uh, e invoicing. This invo in that format, the invoice information is transmitted directly to the tax authority, where actually tax authority validates. And after the approval, that will be directly redirected to the invoice recipient. Um, so you can think the tax authority is in the middle and kind of a, a doorkeeper. They are checking the data, then transmitting to your receiver. But again, for all of these three reports, uh, XML format is uh, used commonly. And in the e-invoicing, actually, the e-invoice needs to contain item-based all the details of the invoice. By the way, uh, you, we have seen the Saudi Arabia, which is the last uh, country uh, for 2021, who is jumping to e-invoicing. I will also have my demo uh, showing how the invoice look like in Saudi. Uh, next slide, please. And this is the schema I like because we were talking the most advanced and the most um, continuous transaction example, which is e-invoicing. You see here, this is actually how our add-on does it, but does not matter. Uh, this is the same uh, valid for e-invoicing country. As a business, you are cre creating your invoice data and uh, our solution actually extract your data. Uh, we can support several ERPs. However, our biggest experience is on SAP. We are collecting from your FI, SD tables, the invoice data. We create the XML or the JSON file according to the country. Then we are submitting to the tax authority. And after tax authority validates, as you see in the picture, the tax authority is in the center. They forward this electronic invoice to the recipient, which means in a country running full B2B e-invoicing, which means business to business, then you don't just send one way your invoices, you also get from the tax authority the invoices issued to your company. So you need to be capable not only sending, transmitting your data, you should be also capable of receiving the data. So it's a two-way of communication. And can we jump to the next slide? You see the more animated one, what I have just explained. <laughs> okay. And uh, you see on the map the countries who had already jumped into the real invoicing. So my only uh, personal, uh, maybe uh, also uh, David, Nick, Steve, you can add some comments, but my, my own uh, prediction is that this map will be more or less fully covered in three, four, four years. Because uh, we have seen also, we will also see the roadmap. And um, next year, for example, um, Poland will start Serbia is going to start with the e-invoicing besides all these countries. So we will be seeing uh, more and more, more and more countries going into the direction of e-invoicing. And I think this map will be looking very crowded in a couple of years. So uh, maybe we go to the next slide, please. Okay, this is actually my favorite slide and I would like uh, to stay a bit on that slide um, because we, we know we have talked that several countries have several types of the uh, reporting formats, reporting periods. We just tried to show on that slide the impact on the business which you see on the left side um, according to the company's reporting, uh, the country's reporting format. Because on the, on the, uh, as you go to the right with the Chile on the extreme example, let's say, you see how this uh, e-invoicing, the continuous transaction, let's say, is on the most complex uh, version. And uh, all these dark blue countries are the e-invoicing countries. And even those are not uh, applying uh, their expectation on the same level. And uh, so definitely this affects the businesses in, uh, let's say, different um, rates. It is not the same effect always country by country. And um, so the, the 
South American countries like Chile, where they have got very advanced systems. Uh, these are followed by Brazil, Mexico, and from Europe, I can give the example as uh, Italy, Turkey, and even around Europe, it varies significantly how they apply uh, the method of doing that one. And actually, this uh, this change all the, uh, let's say, application on the business uh, side, because if you have to provide your data to the tax authority on a real-time basis or, an, or on a near real-time basis, then you need to get it right at that time. So you don't have the second to third chance, let's say, because you are doing it on the real side. You can, it, I mean, you can theoretically go back and correct what you have done, but it is always uh, harder than the old days, let's say. So therefore, it's important that you apply your system correctly at the beginning and you follow in that direction. Um, I think it is time to jump on the uh, demo. It's great. As I said, I will show the um, example on the SAP. And on SAP, as I said, we have, we have our own namespace. And you see uh, actually uh, here several countries. However, I would like to show you first a softy example, the less, uh, let's say, um, the, the post auditing one, let's say we have seen. So actually you are selecting the period you would like to create the report, the fiscal year. And in Romania, actually there are three types of the reports. As I said, that is also different country by country. They would like also, uh, to see your assets and your uh, stock uh, data. So first we extract the data itself. This is kind of the triggering the system to prepare the report on the backend. For that certain period, I had only, as it's, it's a test system, I had only 28 records. But this is important you see on the log because uh, I have 28 uh, only transaction in that certain month. However, you will see how big the data will be. After extracting the data, I just jumped to our, on our cockpit where you can uh, see all the transactions. And I will just sort according to date and I will find uh, the data which has been just now created by myself. Uh, what you need to deliver to the tax authority is the XML version. However, I would like to show you, I'm sorry, I would like to show you the version uh, which is readable, let's say, so that you get an intention about how the reports look like. Oh, sorry, I have all these screens open. I don't know how to minimize them. However, it's not blocking too much, I think. Uh, you see, you 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 report your header information, you report your general ledger accounts, all the customers, suppliers, the tax table, these the records only for 28 uh, transactions. I am doing that. The general ledger entries, the sales invoices, which was uh, out of the 28, 16 were the sales invoices. You also report your purchase invoices. You also report your payments. So uh, this is actually uh, what you are going to report by a, a monthly uh, safety report for Romania. If you have questions, I can answer. As I would like to show you, this was actually the kind of the optional thing because the, the tax authority is not looking for an um, for a that file they would like to get actually an XML of that one. Let me show you also, I will download it on my um, desktop. Okay. This is actually what the tax authority would like to see. You see for this 28, for the file I just have shown you, you get a big XML file, which is uh, big in terms of the length. However, as it is an XML, it is just eight 
kb. Now, uh, to use the time effectively, that was a Saudi example. Now, I would like to jump the Saudi Arabia e invoicing. For the phase one, Saudi Arabia is not um, is not giving you the chance to a direct submission to the tax authority. They just would like you to that you create an XML of your document again the electronic version, and uh, in the second phase they will ask you to send this XML in a signed version. You see the cockpit is more or less the same. That was the XML, and now I would like also to show you how the document look like. As just mentioned, um, it is uh, Arabic. In Arabic, they would like to get this data. This changes also country by country, how they expect. And um, this is a B2B invoice, which is not a simplified invoice. I will try now to check if we have a simplified invoice. Yeah, uh, this, is, um, this is a B2C invoice. And the expectation of the Saudi is if you have a B2C invoice, even from the first day from the phase one, they would like to have a QR code. In the second phase, also B2B, they will require this uh, QR code. Um, they are changing sometimes the content of the schema, even from the day one. So it is important that you are always on track and you follow what's happening, uh, as we just presented in the previous session, uh, what's happening on the tax authorities side. Uh, if there is no uh, questions to, to me on the demo, uh, that was all uh, from my side for demo. Oh, a question I hope from my side would be what what is this QR code? Is it just the ID, the digital ID of the taxpayer, or is it is it the whole uh, it, information? It of contains the whole? it contains yeah yeah it contains also the amount of ETD details such details. Uh, for example, Portugal was also uh, discussing this QR code. This QR code is a uh, that's also kind of um, some countries would like to follow that one. It also makes easier actually, uh, especially thinking on B two C uh, cases. Okay. Um, you don't have this electronic transformation. Very interesting. Um, I think that we, we uh, David, uh, Nick, any any additions to uh, to what I uh, just on time, uh, we are. <laughs> yeah, unbelievable. Uh, uh, thanks for that, uh, David. Uh, Nick, any any final points you want to bring forward, or uh, Rosanna, is there any question from the audience we need to address? No, I would say uh, let the audience speak, and uh, if there are any questions, we are here to uh, to answer them. Yeah, I have a question, I think, for um, Ahu. Um, can a taxpayer scan the QR code on the e-invoices, and do they need to have a specific app issued by the state to do so? Uh, I mean, the QR code is direct. Uh, it is not showing. When you try from your phone, for example, it is not showing you something. It is directing you on a, on a web page, kind of on a uh, web page. And yes, they have special uh, devices. Hmm. So that means you can't read it with your own personal phone, downloading a software from the Saudi uh, authorities, correct? By phone, you if you can try, I can show you, you will just be directed to somewhere. Okay, okay, yeah. Very good. Um, I think uh, we're we're uh, right on the dot. So, um, Rosanna, is there any other other questions? No, there doesn't seem to be anyone at the current moment. Okay, then I would like to thank uh, Ahu and uh, David and Nick for this um, uh, very interesting session. I'd like to um, thank the audience for being here. Uh, please uh, know. So you get some feedback uh, opportunity from us and the slides shared with you uh, later on as you are used to and we will put the um, video version on on the, the websites of the, the three companies involved so uh, I'd like to thank you for your presence and uh, I'd like to close the session now and uh, um, wish you uh, a happy holidays and hopefully see you next year on our webinar on the January 12th. All Thank the you. best. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. Have a good holidays. Bye bye.